Hello and welcome to episode XXX, that is episode 30 of The Money Talks. And it is a special episode because it's a special day and, and it's just serendipity that we've got, you know, all the X chromosomes you could get uh, on this one single episode. So today we've got some awesome founders. It's the first The Money Talks episode where you have more than one speaker. And we have a very special day. Like I said, it's today. Today is Women's Day. I mean, I would argue that every day is a Women's Day, but, uh, you know, uh, but today being, you know, uh, a, a chance for us to recognize uh, some of the people in our ecosystem that, are, that have really, you know, put on an amazing example for other women to follow. Uh, and not just women, I would say even for other founders to follow. So I'm really, really excited about today's episode. We're going to have some very exciting stories. Uh, we won't get to get a chance to go deep into everyone's story, but I think uh, what we're really going to focus on is what makes these women extra special, what makes these founders extra special, and how are they, you know, taking on the challenges? How are they, how are they breaking down the stereotypes? And, and each one of these, uh, you know, founders today are are actually servicing hundreds, if not millions, of people across uh, India, across the globe. Uh, and have raised millions and millions of dollars of equity uh, to to fund their companies and are actually kicking ass and taking names. So without further ado, I would like I would love to introduce uh, Priya, Mahima, Prerna, and Ankita to the show. Welcome, welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Anirudh. I am super excited to have all of you guys over here. I think I've been uh, some of you guys have been trying to get onto the money talks for a while, and you know you guys are busy people. But to get all of you guys in today is an amazing opportunity. What what we'll do, uh, and you know, we've discussed this previously, is why don't we have each one of you give a brief intro about yourself, about your uh, startup, and then also uh, talk a little bit about what uh, got you into entrepreneurship, right? What was that? What was that? Uh, Josh, the Jasba, you know, or, or that Eureka moment that said, you know what, this is the time I want to be in. You know, I've decided to be an entrepreneur for this or for that, right? And many of you guys have very amazing personal stories uh, that I want to get into. So why don't we get started? Ankita, do you want to lead us uh, with uh, the intros and 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 why you uh, chose to be an entrepreneur? Sure. So, uh, so I'm Ankita Sheth. I'm co-founder at Vista Rooms. We are the largest network of luxury homes across India. Uh, today, we are running more than 400 homes uh, currently here, which are exclusive private homes, uh, which one always aspires to stay in. Um, it's a niche segment that we are in. Um, so that's about Vista Rooms uh, and about myself. So um, entrepreneurship was something I think that I can say ran in our blood. Um, right from like the childhood days, uh, we see in our family, come from a joint family, uh, business family in Africa. Uh, and then that was something that throughout the uh, MBA days and even after that kept aspiring me that I want to do something of my own. And uh, this is my second stint uh, in creating of something of my own along with uh, two partners that I have. So that's, that's been the journey so far. Great, Ankita. And I know Vista yeah. Rooms has, uh, I think, uh, been one of the reasons why many people may not have committed suicide during the lockdown. <laughs> so, there you go. We are already putting up our hand. Like, you know, it was a great. Uh, I, uh, I think, uh, I think the amazing work that you guys have done, uh, especially during the lockdown and now, uh, like, uh, yeah. where you guys have come out of it and, and really have uh, taken the bull by the horns, if you would say so. So next, I'll take Prerna, yeah. another one who was affected uh, by the by the lockdown and has come out uh, kicking ass and taking names. So Prerna, a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Prerna Kalra. And I'm creating a product that all of you guys wanted to be more productive at work. So we are basically India's first 24-7 smart kiosk, which provide... Uh, snack, healthy snacking options round the clock to to you guys who stay uh, stay late at work and still looking for something healthy to consume when at work. So, which is Dalchini, India's first uh, twenty four seven uh, snacking destination. Uh, if, about myself, I've been uh, into product development for about twelve years now. Prior to this, I was with Paytm for about uh, seven years and uh, then uh, like looked at the consumer internet journey for a consumer from zero zero users to 250 billion users and seen that how uh, you take the user uh, from and create a micro transaction platform build over it build more use cases around it and then uh, engage the customer more around that use cases right so that's what i've been doing i've been doing in my previous job i was doing in my previous job 
and that gave me a kick that why not create something similar right which has more use cases which engages customers right but around uh, uh, home food which was something that i always longed for when i was working at atm right that while juggling between so many uh, meetings etc right there was always there was a need for healthy food all the time right and that that's how dalchi was born thank you prerna and uh, you know you've obviously uh, come out of the lockdown you've become one of, one of the critical elements in the delhi ecosystem i think a lot of founders looking out to reach out to customers have been approaching you uh, and, and i think the next person that would uh, that would you know probably follow follow through with uh, obviously creating an entire business out of the lockdown would be mahima mahima from kutlut mahima welcome hi hi amrit hi everybody um so yeah i'm mahima mahima call and i'm founder of kutlut and um, so kutlut is basically an offline to online marketplace aggregator for unorganized retailers sellers manufacturers home sellers to come and sell online for the first time in india we're very focused on the offline retail market and those sellers who can't like go to an amazon or a flipkart because of xyz reasons like you know the language being a uh, vernacular and the private limited gst certifications and etc and we built our technology for the local language people selling in india so that's pretty much the business and yeah co- corona and covid was pretty good for us in terms of the fact that uh, india got really hugely digitized and everybody wanted to sell online for the first time and kutlut was the best platform for them that time because it was pretty easy simple local language so yeah um uh, good for us that time <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i think um, i i mean i started i i'm a very young entrepreneur i'm going to say uh because i got into consulting at nielsen and um, i think working there um i realized i was helping these big businesses to make these big important decisions in life but what i really wanted to do was you know my own thing and that's sort of what i you know pushed myself through and that's how kutlut came into being with obviously my co-founder so yeah thank you thank you mahima uh, you know and uh, prior to the lockdown i think uh, it or lockdown obviously affected your business a lot in fact the next uh, person i'm going to introduce affected her completely changed her business model because she was in the middle of raising her funding round when the entire lockdown hit her and and uh, again has emerged very very strongly out of it but uh, but mahima to you, to you to you i mean uh, all the power to you i know you guys have had to had very very difficult challenges especially because of the kind of investor base you also have and yeah. uh, and you know, it's <laughs> it's uh, it, it it's really is a testament right of of sticking yeah. sticking through it and and being where you guys are at today so next next person priya why don't you take take us through the through your journey as well hi everyone uh, i'm priya gupt i am one of the three co-founders at hopspace uh, so hopspace is an extra curricular activities platform for kids between 3 to 14 years uh, where we focus on building the right skill at the right age by means of different activities like chess or a sudoku or a scrabble football cricket so you know um, anything and everything that a parent would want for their kid they can come on hop space uh, try out uh, our uh, standardized curriculum created by activity champions and you know rest assured their kid would have those skills lasting throughout their lifetime once built uh, during the very early days Uh, about myself my background i was born and brought up in delhi i come from a very uh, middle class banya family so i've seen my father set up a business run it himself uh, so you know obviously a very different situation a uh, very different scale uh, but i think somewhere the the banya genes always tickle in me uh, even during my corporate stints at uh, places like s&p and goldman sachs so um, ultimately i quit my corporate career in may 2018 uh, got married in mumbai in 2019 and that's where i picked up this uh, challenge of uh, uh, that that you know parents were facing of sending kids to extra curricular activities so uh, that's how hop space was born thank you thank you so much priya and uh, you know i i think there's been a couple of pivots uh, to where you guys are at today and and the last pivot seems to be really working out so uh, you know looking forward again like i said uh, to all of your stories so i think you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to have an open format with everyone i think we've got a few few questions uh, that i've always wanted to ask 
Uh, and uh, I think people would really want to know. And, and again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free. There's a comment section below the video uh, that you guys are seeing right now. So go ahead and ask your questions and we'll, we'll ask these awesome you know, set of founders uh, whatever that you've been wishing to ask them for a very long time. But to get started, I think let's talk about like what were the two biggest challenges, right? And and again, I, I personally, and this is a personal uh, opinion of mine, I personally don't like the don't like the word female founder. I think founder by itself is asexual and by calling it a female founder or giving any kind of special treatment to a female actually just uh, solidifies the fact that we consider them to be less than a male. And I don't think any one of you guys, and I know some of you guys are, are the CEOs of your companies, right? And and not just uh, not just a add-on co-founder. Uh, so all of you guys are are a very critical part. I mean, Mahima, you were you were you were pretty much responsible for raising the round in 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 uh, in the Chinese in China when you were there, right? And and so each one of you guys has played a very critical role in your journeys. And I don't personally believe that a founder should get signified as male or female. But I do completely agree and and have seen that there is, there is a divide. There are challenges. Uh, to being a, a founder and then having uh, you know the two X chromosomes as well. So would love to know from you guys like what are the two biggest challenges you you faced in becoming the founder that you are today? And you know I could start. Let's start with uh, maybe Prerna. You want to get get us started on that one? The two okay. biggest challenges you faced in becoming the founder you are today. So I would say that uh, yeah, this X chromosome challenge. Like, okay, this woman founder and especially the kind of business we are in, right? Where you need to scale right uh, where you basically are creating something which has food technology a lot of pieces put together so that that's always a question right but uh, to me how i look at it is right that uh, if you have you, if you have really passion towards it right, right if you really think that you need to get this done right so then there is nothing up called as big challenge right you're gonna do it whether it is a female founder or whether it is a male founder it's ultimately boils down to your passion the passion about what you are building so that's how i see i don't see that there is something called as very big challenge because being a, a female founder no, and, and, but but other than that even as a founder per se right trying trying to uh, get started was there any challenges that you that you particularly identified that this was a challenge that i really had to face uh, that i may not have thought about when i started um i would say right so every every product journey etc it starts right right you have to create like the initial team right it becomes like the uh building block of your organization right so initial i took about six months right to create the initial team right uh because i was uh, very sh uh, like i would not say selective but i was very conscious about that whom am i taking along with me right for this long long journey, long trip, right, ultimately. So that was very important question to me, right? So that was a challenge, right? But ultimately, once that got built, right, the trust came in, the initial team got created, and it became really easy. Thank you. Mahima, what about you? I think, uh, you know, what were your biggest challenges? I know you, you, faced, you faced a few in your fundraising journey, um, <laughs> but was there any specific challenges that were, you know, uh, specific to you that, that, you know, you could identify? I guess I think initial years of you know building the business when we were seed raise funding and that was quite that was a little bit difficult. I feel I remember one of the first few pitches you know we as a company were pitching. I think you were there. Um, I was the only woman founder in the room, and there were like two hundred people, and I was the only. I think I Kautlub was the only company with a woman founder. So I don't yeah. know if it's you a were the only woman in the room. That's for sure. <laughs> I yeah. remember that. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a challenge, but you know, you enter into a room, it just sort of intimidates you because I mean, this is supposed to be my professional ground and this is supposed to be my safe haven and my sort of people, but you enter and you see no women around there. So you're like, uh, okay, am I, is it like, you know, a self validation of sort, sort of brings that sort of uh, feeling comes in, but I think um, it's more external rather than internal because internally when you're working it work you know in your office it doesn't matter the gender doesn't really matter it depends on your strengths you know how um, your passion and what you want to build as a company but i think when we go out the stereotypes and all of that the barriers sort of bring in i think the only solution to that would be just to push through and you know i mean honestly people say believe in yourself and let let you know your work speak for itself so i think yeah that's pretty much it 
uh, at any point feel like you know that your male co-founders possibly got a lot more attention than you did because you had two earlier that question on your own <laughs> you know why i i <laughs> <laughs> I think, except for the fact that your male founder doesn't take any breaths between his pitches, I think everything else is fine. <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I think another, I mean, another maybe a male-dominated industry would probably be, be, be probably be in the in the hospitality space, right? Very few uh, female uh, owners or female promoters of hospitality companies. So, in, in your case, Ankita, was there any major challenges you had to face? uh when you know i've been getting started with vista rooms and obviously the couple of pivots that you guys have done yeah so yes we had challenges in fact uh, when uh, you know mahima was saying about like investors being around and uh, otherwise also so i had a similar challenge in the early days this is during the seed days uh, where it was a little uh, difficult to convince uh, people for hospitality business and uh, uh, female there and being heard but uh, the good part was that you know a little later in the conversation when you talk sense people then start uh, listening to you and believing in you and i think that determination is required so this is i'm talking about 2015 uh, so it's been many years ago uh, apart from that uh, also in the hospitality space we at vista room started from the budget segment so uh, it was a little challenging uh, in terms of our uh, hotel partners to deal with them uh, especially the budget segment uh, and we had three countries that we were uh, looking at at that time and especially the early days this is even before i mean this is when you we bootstrapped uh, we used to travel in uh, buses overnight uh, all over india trains uh, stayed in the product which you wanted to create uh, so those challenges we definitely faced but uh, i think uh, that made the product strong uh, and then obviously the pivots came in so not really a, a female founder or uh, those kind of challenges but typically have any startup goes through uh, a pivot and how uh, one uh, faces a lot of challenges in uh, getting through those pivots and then uh, you know another fundraise and and so on so that's that's been uh, you know for us few of our journeys yeah I was. I have a question in my mind, but I'm going to. I'm going to bring it up, and I'll probably poll everybody very quickly after that. But, but, uh, Priya, you you actually your your venture is in the parenting space, but you're not a parent yourself. Is that has that been one of the biggest challenges to convince other parents? Um, and what challenges have you faced? Parents, Anirudh, because uh, you know ultimately parents don't come and ask me, uh, uh, "Are you married or do you have a child?" But I was asked uh, by a lot of potential uh, investors or partners, uh, "Oh, so you just got married? Uh, have you seen kids around? Do you know how does this function?" And I was like, "I have a solid business case. I know what the problems, and I've seen these problems in my family." Yeah, you know, so do my other uh, co-founders. So you know, you don't have to really uh, experience it firsthand. You know, I don't have to be a bomb and then wait and realize okay, these are the problems that I, as a mother, would face and then come up with, uh, with a business model. Uh, so yeah, I was definitely asked all of this, um, and I think uh, uh, even before this, you know, very initial days, it was very uh, difficult to have the right uh, sort. co-founders on board uh right partners in terms of investors uh, uh the first few people who joined the team because ultimately it's about building a family and for anybody to uh, trust you you have to sort of demonstrate a very very um, so- solid foundation which uh, you know not everybody might have every skill it is good to accept that okay i am very good at finance but you know marketing i need to so please you know come on board uh, so those things have to be done and i think as an extension of that uh, for me i am a first time uh, uh, co-founder and i am a female on on top of the, uh, that so it's it's sort of difficult to convince people because uh, there is no validation as such that in the past uh, apart from my corporate experience so yeah these were some of the challenges um, i faced in the initial days so so the question that i have for all of you guys right all of you guys are funded companies you know uh, how many of you guys have at least one female investor in your company mahima you have a female investor and mahima prena you can't count yourself no i'm not counting <laughs> <laughs> But but and how many of you guys have at least have? So obviously Ankita and Priya you don't. But how many of you guys have at least two female investors? 
and how, how many investors do you have in total like more than 10 i would imagine more than 15 right most yeah. of you guys are probably more than 15 investors so it, it is a lonely world right i, I mean yeah. we've been I have been noticing that the number of female investors actually in our ecosystem has been going down. You know, when I was a, when I was part of Mumbai Angels, there was a lot more female investors. I mean, we had Nandini. We I remember, you know, obviously we've got a very strong uh, female investor in Padmaja who who heads IAN and the IAN fund. But I have noticed that that you know while the number of male investors keeps on increasing in the ecosystem, female participation, right, has been lower and lower. I think as a percentage, maybe maybe. The numbers could be a little bit bigger, but the number of males versus the females has definitely been a huge gap. And do you think that that is that that also drives how some of the how the way the ecosystem actually thinks, right? Because there's not enough females out there uh, that that would even you know be able to connect, right? It's, that there is a divide, there is a you know there is a bit of a, a different mindset, right? I mean, from from where both both people think, has that been a factor in how you've had to uh, approach investors uh, because they're they're largely female. Uh, I'll leave it open I, to anyone to answer. I think there there is one uh, like there is a perspective, right? Everybody has like perception that everybody has that okay, if they're looking at a male founder, it's a male founder, right? But when they're looking at a female founder, oh, she's a daughter, she's a mother, she's a wife, right? Hmm. So she has so many hats to wear, which is there, right? But that shouldn't be the reason to judge her in that her as a founder yeah and, and in, in fact yeah sorry go ahead Mama, you were saying so like just put it like you know adding on to that i think a lot of um in male indian investors you know stereotype like founder like the women founders like i remember from personal experience um i'm an engineer by education but i remember the initially people just assumed that i was in fashion and I, because we were starting, we started the company as a secondhand fashion business. So they were, they, everyone thought I was a stylist, something very women related. And nobody actually thought I was working in the logistics or the, you know, the operations side of the business. So that definitely happens. And I think India, you know, like foundations like the Sogal Foundation or Female Founders Fund, I think all of those funds aren't there in India. And um, even though, you know, we say that, we, uh, there's no difference between a woman and a man, but because the representation is like what two percent in tech right now, we do need um, very women-focused funds because honestly, uh, the empathy being the biggest concern, women investors will empathize with women founders and the challenges that we face. So yeah, I guess yeah that that, that I don't know if it's a like a, it will change the entire um, aspect of raising funds by women, but I think it'll be one of the stepping stones to you know get better numbers out of it. Yeah, no, just very, adding very, very to that. Well yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, just adding to that, that there will be, uh, I mean, if, if there's more, uh, you know, female uh, investors, probably this whole being judgmental, uh, the stereotype uh, questions that we sometimes get and have gone through those also in the start, that, uh, you know, what if you get a child, how will you be able to work and so on. I think those probably will stay out. So I think that's that's the need. <laughs> That we should have more uh, investors or females. So, yeah. I think there is one more is that... reason. One more thing that there are, no, there are very less role models also, which have like proved, right? Yeah. So it's also like uh, while there are so many, if you look at ratios, right? Number of uh, billion dollar companies now we have Bumble, Bun, right? But how many are there in India, right? Let's just look at it. Let's just be realistic, right? That are there many? It's still in building, right? There are very less women like us, right, today in, in our country. Like we say that there are just 40% women, right? Women-led companies or enterprises in India versus the rest statistics which are male-dominated. But to your point, Prina, I think it's not just an India issue, right? When you go back and see the number of VC-funded companies in the US or other more advanced ecosystems, and you would imagine you would imagine it'd be close to 50 percent it may not be 50 but you would imagine it'd be close to 45 percent or 40 percent but in many areas i think it's sub 20 percent right and i'm talking about ecosystems that have been there for for ages right uh, india I, I don't think india currently has a woman a founder-led company which is a unicorn obviously you've got your bumbles of the world that 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 are in the in the western ecosystem and you know we've got for example shivani Who's the founder of Tala? Almost a Sunicon, at close to eight hundred million dollar valuation. But you know that that it's not just an India specific issue. It seems to be more of a global issue. Like Mahima said, there's a stereotype that if you're an engineer, chances are you're a male and not a female. 
and that 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 is so so sad because there is some amazing engineering talent out there there is some amazing you know uh, you know out of the box thinkers that have created amazing products that are not uh, you know that are not not male right and that they that they are female and and so so to your point i think it's it's one thing to have female it, it's good to have that female investor out there that is that is definitely thinking for the other female founder but i also feel sometimes in some of these rooms and i think priya you faced some of these questions in the past i would love love just to have some female out there that would give an eye to a male investor who asked a dumb question what happens when you get pregnant right and and it, it would just be great to have a female founder who would just look back and say sort of give the eye like what the heck did you just say right and i don't think that is there right and there, there is sort of a herd mentality when someone asks such a dumb question and and priya i think you face some of these because you were recently married and and you are you are in a venture in the parenting space how how did you manage that so um i think anurud in that case it's um very important for people to understand that not just the uh, woman who's getting pregnant it's also the male and in my case i have also a co-founder of a successful startup so you know uh, whenever it comes both of us will be sharing this and both of us will be in this together so you know uh, when it comes to my work it's my responsibility and i take it very seriously and uh, i thought that when it comes to that he would do the same and uh, i think fortunately for me i have had a very supportive family also so they you know, never questioned me on when are you going to get pregnant they know i've just started out and uh, you know i i've got uh, a good number of years to build this up before i get into that that mode so um family planning i think uh, is something that every woman should be very um, stern about and given giving an answer back to any of the investors like you said you know give them an eye and you know just move on because if, if that person already has a bias uh, for you uh, in that manner he or she can never be a great great partner uh, to have a and I, i mean that sort of leads to my next question is a, is that besides this this uh, pregnancy question what are the most ridiculous questions you guys have ever faced in an interaction uh, with investors and you know you may, may you may choose two or two not uh, name them but i'm just would like to know like what are the kind of questions you guys have had to face um, uh, i i was asked one very uh, ridiculous question once uh, can you be aggressive and harsh you come across as that sort of a personality uh, so um, i think does not have to be that you know you have to adopt a male attitude of being competitive or harsh at workplace you can always be yourself and you know still motivate your team you can be true to yourself and still build out a business you know there is no stereotype that you have to uh, adopt a male attitude of being harsh anyone else prerna how about you on a very similar question my answer to them was that my mother has raised three kids right and she was able to do it very well so i just have to dalchi and my daughter so i'll be able to uh, do a better job so on a very similar question that was asked once to me but but i, I honestly fair na use case scare me sometimes so when we're negotiating it's always like i i i have to have my facts straight so i, I, I don't know how someone could ever ask you the question like <laughs> uh but but to your point i mean any uh, ankita mahima i know you 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 uh, raised money from two different ecosystems two very strong male dominated ecosystems right anything that you've had to face that was uh, you know out, out of the norm pretty ridiculous i think honestly i uh, okay so basically ankita mahima so i think with china it was way easier i'm going to be like i don't know if i'm going to be politically incorrect here But it was way easier. There were no stereotypes. Nobody really cared about if I'm a woman or a man, and all they cared about was, you know, the work, the product, and everything. Um, and honestly, they have a lot of uh, very strong uh, women-led VC fund leaders. Uh, especially, like I remember meeting like um, Club Factories, Chiming, uh, Helen, and a lot of a lot of them. I mean, they're very they're very into the data. They just need to know the product and. they're pretty harsh to be honest and they don't really care if you're a man or a woman they're just going to they're going to still bash you if you if they think your product's crap but in india i feel um i have had to take a potential back seat while fundraising in india and it has been easier for my other co-founders to fundraise to be very honest because uh people tend to expect that i remember some somebody just said like does she know how to do her like is she good with her numbers or you know uh does she know her like would she be able to 
I don't know, negotiate with the with the logistic partners or something like that. I remember in the initial days, and uh, that's just like a funny thing to say. I mean, um, I don't even know from where these stereotypes come up, but yeah. So I think India is a little more difficult in terms of the whole fundraising for women. I feel. Yeah. No, fair, 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 fair. Uh, no. and again i th- i think it comes back to the fact that we're still very young ecosystem right uh, but you know you br- you bring you bring up a very interesting point and would love love to ask everyone to just comment on it mahima said that when you go to the a chinese ecosystem the, which is probably about 15 20 years ahead of us right now whether you're a male or a female you get treated the same way which means if you whether whether you, whether you're, you're you're getting yelled at or whether you're getting grilled it doesn't matter whether you're a male or a female in india I, sometimes i feel that you know because uh, and this is something that i have noticed that you know that they they want to be a little more careful with the female does that actually make you guys what how does that make you guys feel like would you guys rather right be like you know what if i'm wrong just come on and say i'm wrong stop trying to beat around the bush right is yeah, that something that you guys look forward to does it really happen what like, what, what, what's your thought there pass on the feedback through some other route right <laughs> rather than upfront about it right they would just pass on the feedback through somebody who would produce it right rather than you get up front because that gives you no scope to basically explain again or negotiate again or at least explain them again right because thought of that okay this is this is what it is right rather than giving us a chance again probably that's not the case uh, when it comes to a male founder because there they would probably ask again or maybe try to grill right for a woman founder they would say that okay she doesn't know the subject ankita do you feel the same thing You've, yeah, so um, you, you obviously, two male yeah, co-founders too, right? Yes, two male co-founders. So uh, I've always seen that people have been more polite uh, when they want to talk to me as compared to my partners. And um, though it's uh, momentarily it seems nice, but after I feel that why couldn't this, they just tell me also? Um, and I think that's uh, that's something that I feel people should change. They should treat uh, equally uh, both males and females there. So being uh, nice to female founders is not nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I agree. I, I I think I think it's it's so important to be able to give that kind of feedback. I mean, uh, you know, Priya, you and I speak almost on a weekly basis, and and that's something that at least I hope you know we've had we've had our share of you know disagreements on certain things. But uh, have you ever felt that from other investors? And you, I mean, I know you've got other investors on your cap table. Have you felt that there was a difference, like what Nankita and Prerna have uh, talked about? That you know you get treated with kids' gloves all of a sudden, instead of saying you know what I'm a grown up, I can I can take it. Why don't you just give it? Give it to me like you you want me to hear it. Yeah, I I think it just ha- uh, happened in the initial days, but you know, like I said, because uh, you know, first time co-founder and a female co-founder, uh, people think नहीं आता यार पता नहीं क्या कर रहे हैं इसको कुछ समझा देते हैं. So that does happen, but I think once you've proven to people that hey, uh, there's you know enough skin in the game from my side, and I know what I'm doing, and you know here's the actual feedback because I run this business day in day out. Um, here are things I have accomplished, so you know let's own to these, and 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 you know uh, now people have started coming out and giving the feedback directly to me. And, uh, it, initial days, yeah, you're right, it did happen that you know it was routed through somebody, and you know came via different channels, and. Uh, even you know initial days of investor presentations you know sometimes you just get to know how people are reacting in the room and what would be their feedback but uh, you know it it just sometimes come in a very flurry uh, email that you know hey we will not be investing at the moment uh, it it'll just be good to know what was your actual feedback because we've been in one room for that one hour or or 90 odd minutes and we all know what was the feedback so you know don't don't put make it very flurry and put it out there uh, it, it, in a very sweet manner in the i mean it's it's very interesting it's very heartening to hear that from each one of you guys you know like treat us like like if you if you really consider us to be an equal treat us like the equal right treat us like the male and stop looking at us and saying you know what just because you're a female i'm going to treat you treat you a bit differently i mean i've been on the other side of conversations where you know i met a f- a female co-founder and again i won't name them uh for for obvious purposes but when they were discussing with me when they presented they were like i'm this strong female and you know i i make my own decisions and and it's not even a question i asked it was something that just said you know like i come from this x city or y city and i've been through all these things in my life and then when we came to negotiating on the term sheet the woman is just sitting on the side and the negotiations have been done by the husband and it's happened to me twice and i said in on both occasions i decided to move away from the term sheet i said this is not what you presented yourself to be and if and your husband's not even a co-founder 
right? Like there are three people, of, three out of the four of you guys are married, right? You, you have strong husbands. I, I think it's very disempowering. I, if I, if that's the right word, if I could use is, is when suddenly you're saying that, you know, I, that, you know, your, the husband is trying to negotiate for the wife. And I don't think that's, that's the right attitude. I don't think that's the way a negotiation should be done or, or would be done, but it, it's happened a couple of times. I, I've negotiated with each one of you guys uh, on, on term sheets. I've, I've you know, uh, invested in each one of your companies. Is this something like, why would a husband need to step in? Like, Prina, would you ever have a star, your husband or Ankita or Priya, whatever? And one, one of you guys would like, be like, you know what? The husband is a better negotiator than me. Like, how does that, or how, always, is, is that the right attitude? <laughs> I've always got the feedback that you've just given. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know you always. I always have to start like 20 20 uh, percent below when I really want to get the valuation with Peda because you know she's going to start somewhere else and you have to bring her down. Uh, but but you know, like, what about you, Priya? I mean, Priya, your 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 husband runs a uh, runs runs a unicorn. You know, one of the uh, yeah, and uh, you know people would uh, would imagine that oh, he's going to give you the right 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 information or the right thing. But is is that ever been a you know how how does that conversation work at home like when you're like listen you know, I'm have, facing this issue with with uh, Artha and you know they're not they're not they're not ready to budge on this on this one point on the term sheet right is there a conversation that that takes place? Honestly, we we try to avoid that at home because he's got his stuff ongoing. I've had, uh, got my stuff ongoing, and um, I think it's important to have a mentor. Uh, you know, which in in my case is is my husband and you know two three other uh, very good uh, co-founders of different uh, startups. Uh, but you you cannot run to them with every small thing. Ultimately, you are the one who's making the decision. So, um, you know, I, I would never have my husband do that negotiation for me. I I have a very good uh, set of lawyer partners. I have a very good set of investor partners. I would rather reach out to them and, you know, uh, ask them about, how, hey, uh, this is something I'm doing for the first time. So how uh, does this need to be done? So I would rather do that uh, instead of going to my husband because then I know how, how it would start looking like, okay, he's, uh, you know, sort of trying to cloud the thinking and, you know, be in charge of the situation. So, uh, yeah, we, we try to avoid that at home. And, and Angita, in your case, it's even, you know, you, you, you've you got, like, in your network, you've got a solid VC investor, right, who's probably been there since the birth of uh, angel investing in India. You've got, uh, you know, uh, you've obviously got, 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 he's now a VC-funded founder as well. You've got, you know, you've got... Uh, a sis, uh, you've got a sister who's who's been in the VC ecosystem for for ages now, right? Starting with Mumbai Angels, and so you've got all of this stuff around you, right? And so you you have a very different viewpoint. Any, anything that, that you would say would like to add here? So uh, simple habit: don't discuss everything with everyone. So it's uh, we have a, like our mentors and our uh, like my two co-founders. Generally, it's just us who decide. Already, we are like enough minds. I feel then why take something to anybody else so um so yeah we've we've generally kept these things just within us uh everyone around is very supportive but it's um at times you don't want to take the support because it can only confuse you uh so our strategy is simple that the three of us not just me but even my partners have a lot of people around them who uh could advise them on a lot of things uh, but we just avoid it we keep it simple so it's just us so we, we take our decisions and the only thing we do is we talk to our mentors at times where we need the advice. Yeah. I, th I think that's the right way to do it. And I think I think it, it, it sort of leads to my next question, right? And and the work-life balance, right? How, how does it work, right? And I'm not talking now, let's forget about the female co-founder tag. Let's just talk about as founders, right? I mean, three of you guys are married. How, how do you manage all of it? Unfortunately, the expectation still ends up being that the woman's supposed to be the, the baker of the house, right? And and I, I think although that is changing, it, it's not probably not changing fast enough, right? Not as fast as our ecosystem is currently changing. So how, how do you guys have that conversations, right? How What's the three things a founder must do, right, to support their business and their partner, right? And I'm, again, I'm talking from a very neutral standpoint at this point. I'm saying if you now this advice could be for a male looking at the other way or the, or the female looking the other way. Uh, but... As a founder, right, you obviously, um, if you're married or in a relationship, the expectation is that you're going to be taking care of the business and taking at least being an emotional support or some sort of support for you for the other side. And trust me, I have the question coming the other way too. So what the other side has to do. So let's why don't we start off by uh, you know talking about you know what are the three things that that you as a founder must do on a daily basis or on a on a on a, on a you know periodic basis to make sure that you can support both. Right. 
can have any one of you guys say mahima do you want to start like what what are the three things uh, you are doing honestly like i wouldn't be like the best you know person to answer this cuz i had like i have been struggling with this work life balance thing since the beginning initial four, like when we started the company like four and a half years ago there was no life uh we pretty much it was work and yeah uh if i've become better at it i think um, you realize that you're always in this room with your founders and working constantly and you end up not realizing that you need external inputs to actually make sure that your mental you, you have like a stable mental health Rachel, i think Rachel, it, um, it is it is a tough one yeah yeah because i mean honestly um the inta- you you you're already working it's a very tough competitive thing that you're already doing with so much competition you need to constantly pivot constantly change and if you don't have a social life and it it is very difficult so i guess you know just like doing small things you love i mean uh, the cliche is like reading a book watching a lot of netflix i mean netflix been my little respite so yeah doing that works well and uh, i think another thing i realized is when while running the company initially i wasn't really focused on hiring uh, you know you uh, you end up hiring people you like uh, who are good hmm. for their role you don't actually end up thinking is it a woman or a man but i've realized personally when i look because i spent like what 12 to 14 hours at work i didn't at after a particular point of time have a lot of women to talk to at work which is funny because i'm a woman founder so um, initially up to 1 to 2 years i made like a conscious decision of hiring more women so that i can have more women related you know conversations and at work and i realized that 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 actually helps a lot i mean brings a lot of diversity brings uh, you know Very people true. to connect with so yeah bringing more diversity to the work to the workplace also also can be part of the work work life balance right i mean if you if you have a bunch of single single people in, at work right and no, nobody's married i don't think you as a married yeah. person can really pick up the meter right absolutely uh, like our entire office so yeah uh, uh, i mean priya you're recently married right and, and i'm sure you've seen your husband uh, while, while scaling his startup obviously not respecting the work life balance for a bit but but now the now you're running you're running a fast growing startup how does it work how, how, what are the, what are the what are the things that you are doing to make sure that there is a, some 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 semblance of a work life balance when it comes to a relationship so um i think it's it's uh, in a way fortunate that i have a husband who knows how this uh, life of a of an entrepreneur works so it's been pretty easy on that side and even with my in-laws because you know they've seen uh, my husband work that way they they sort of uh, you know streamlined to that but you know when it comes to my parents for example i have to actually make a sit down and you know it's it's important to set expectations right that hey mom i know this is important but right now i have uh you know uh which will help me uh do xyz things so if your one function is not important i would like to skip that uh so you know it's important to have open conversations with everybody at home highlighting what is important for you personally and professionally um uh, as for the work life balance i think uh, investment banking taught it to me the hard way where you know you have to uh, switch off for some time whether it's 2 hours or 4 hours find that time for yourself do one thing that you like it does not have to be many things uh, at one go so for example i love mandala art so i would you know switch off myself and do that for 2 hours painting with different colors and and that you know rejuvenates me to so find that one thing uh, where, where you can dedicate those 2 hours or 4 hours and come back all refreshed so uh, i think that's how i i, I manage work life balance uh, and again like i said in a, in a, in my relationship it's been uh, you know sort of very easy he understands that i have to work i understand that he has to work so we we take working vacations now this perfect i think that's that's the, that's the best way to do it like just take a vacation as they, as they would call it Ankita, actually, you're you're in a business where other people are taking vacation at your properties, right? Is 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 is, so, is that been something? So we've had a lot of <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of founders, uh, you know, a lot of people from wealth management, investment bankers working from our home. So Priya, we are there <laughs> to whenever you want to go. But uh, just adding to you know what uh, we've been saying and talking about on the work-life balance, I I really feel that. Um, there's no work life balance at least and one should not even think about it in the early years of the startup and um, that's the expectation one has to set for everyone around them uh, and clearly set your priorities i think that's that we all talk about passion determination it's about that right that single focus that you want to grow your business so i i think um, that 
that's why work life balance is not really one should look at at least at the early days so, yeah and prerna how about you how about you i think uh, you you you're all, you're a mother on top of it right so now there's there's a daughter to think about right and uh, how are you managing it all like you've got you two children one is your startup one is your daughter and you, yeah. you you've got a partner that that seeks some sort of support from you uh, you know wh- how are you managing it all so how do you like, how do you keep that work life balance yeah even prior to starting dalchini right while i was with my previous organization ptm right so, work like you you couldn't actually compartmentalize right that okay this is work time this is the life time so in fact i remember i carried my daughter along and she was like one and a half years to hongzhou for a one day trip to china while i was there at ptm so uh, mumbai i have like traveled a lot of times along with my daughter and for that i think my family has been really supportive because sometimes my bhabhi sometimes my mother somebody has gone along with me so that uh, i can give enough time to my daughter and yet attend the work visit that or yet be there at the fair and supposed to be right one is like i think uh, the support from the family that's the key where i feel that because you cannot like like ankita said right you cannot actually say that okay this is my work time and this is my family time once you are into a startup because all the time sometimes you're getting calls sometimes you are there's a lot of things to do there's a lot of things which are uh, not scheduled right which are which are there for you to finish off after your regular office work also right so for me i think uh, uh, i talk a lot about my startup at my family within my family like everybody whether it is my father in law or my husband my parents everybody right right I talk a lot about it and so that they can at least relate to my problem that they can relate to the problems that i am facing they can at least relate they can then support me right when i need it right and instead of asking questions that why you haven't attended this function or why were you not there for so and so event etc they would empathize with me that okay i am doing something important right and that's why probably i would have been able to make it very very interesting is that is that been something that's helpful like talking about maybe uh, work problems and maybe it maybe it also bleeds into my other my my next question in a bit is that what is this what is the kind of support that you seek from your not just your partner but you know and I, i'm talking more of an ecosystem here that you guys got your of your own right your your personal support group what is that you seek from them right and 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 maybe some so you some of you guys could even answer it from a partner perspective what is it that you seek from your husband or you what, what is it that you seek from um, your 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 uh, your partner because I, i can tell you that personally sometimes it's it's very difficult for me even for me to have a work life balance right I, i love diving for example right and it's always been my thing that whenever there's too much work and i feel i'm about to get fried i just find myself a nice diving vacation go under water for uh for 5 6 days and there's there's the thankfully there's no phones that work under water as of now so so there's no way in anyone anyone can get get in touch with me and when i come back i'm fully rejuvenated i've got a new perspective on life there's the batteries are charged and again you know you, you can get back to the, get back to work uh and and I, and like some of you guys said like you know you know you talk about mandala painting or or someone talked about reading all of us have our own things maybe to, maybe to switch off but but when you've got somebody that you're living with right and somebody that's that you're spending a lot of your time outside of what what work is what is it you seek from them uh because you know there's going to be missed lunches there's going to be missed missed events there's going to be i mean it happens to miss dinners right so, something blows up at the last moment and next thing you know you're like listen i can't make this dinner and then the person sitting in a in a restaurant somewhere and you're like you're feeling really shitty about it to be honest right and and like i said this is this is really an asexual question it happens to all founders right but what is that you seek from them do you do you seek understanding do they have to understand every single time like what what is it what 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 is it i mean mahima you you're you're, you're a single uh, co-founder as in like you're not married yet uh, but, but again it's a, it's a difficult dating life right for founders out there so how how are you uh, how are you when you're a startup founder there is no dating life <laughs> well yeah but i think i think uh more than dating you know like just like the parental expectations of a single girl working in mumbai is quite very high also i'm from a family of doctors if you're either a doctor or an engineer no one's an entrepreneur no one does, no, i don't think anyone has ever 
like had a business so making my parents understand what i'm trying to do also the initial years is when you don't have like a salary you're still figuring it out you're you know i mean you're bootstrapped and everything even with seed i mean you literally you're just surviving on peanuts and uh, like parents don't get that especially like a girl living alone in mumbai already super expensive so i think making them understand that you know it's going to be okay i'm going to be fine i you don't need to come and take care of me and i will survive that kind of a thing is the biggest um, you know problem that i faced and honestly i am not dating anyone because there is no time to date because we have to fundraise in every 6 months so kahan se how are you like dating anyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, uh, I, I think uh, Bhima, you've 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 taken the words like you just made me speechless for for a second here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go 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 backwards. I'm gonna go from the single co-founder to the recently married to to the to the to, you know, to the ma- the one who's been married for 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 a bit and the one who's been married the longest. So Priya, you you want to take the take take it from here? So um, again, I, I think. it fortunately never happened that i had to you know sit alone at a restaurant waiting for my husband uh, but i'm pretty sure if, if that happens i'll always be like here your credit card i'm going to have my lunch now by your card <laughs> no no i was talking the other way when when suddenly you've got a fiasco at work and now your your husband's waiting at, at a restaurant like is what's the expectation there like Well, are they supposed he, to make you feel shitty? Are they supposed to understand every single time? What are they supposed to do? So he's pretty understanding, Anirudh. So never, never ever face that situation. But yeah, like I faced with my parents, it happened a couple of times. So I had to sit down and tell them, listen, if I miss something and I promise something, but I couldn't make it, none of your cha cha ta bua would feel bad about it because I am like the least important at that party. So uh, you know, uh, they've, they've also kept terms with it now in, in the last. Or, or or is it that you've kept a scorecard? Listen, remember when you were building your startup, you missed so many lunches, right? And and so I'm only on on the ratio right now is three out of thirty, so I've got another twenty seven that I can miss. Start doing that actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, oh, Ankita, yeah. how about you? I mean, and I, I know I know you come so, from um, a strong entrepreneurial family, so you know there's a there there obviously is a lot of missed lunches out there. So, Yeah, I mean there have been a lot of incidents. So um, as I said, you know, expectation building for everyone. My husband's also an entrepreneur. My in-laws are, my mother's side, uh, and like siblings, and also it's. Um, I think people understand that is one. But we have very, uh, very heavy social life that also goes along with all of this. So um, it's always about uh, you know how we build the right expectations. Uh, I've had cases where uh, there's a meeting in Thane, there's a movie. The times when we used to go to movie theaters, uh, you have to reach there, and I go at least post the interval and and so on. So, um, but yeah, it it just shows more like uh, now it's it's accepted. So <laughs> just I take care that it's not like they feel that I'm taking it for granted. But yeah, everyone understands. <laughs> I would but say how do you build that? I, I, that's a that's a question. That, yeah, I mean that's a question to ask. Like you know, like uh, it's it's difficult to understand. Uh, I, I'm, again, I'm not talking from a very female. I'm talking from even to make my own my own father who's an entrepreneur understand that sometimes I'm not going to be able to make it for a wedding, right? And don't feel bad that I'm not making it for a wedding. But it becomes so difficult in families like all of us, right? I mean that this expectation yeah. is that because you're a founder, you can make your own schedule. But honestly, it's the opposite, right? I mean, you really you really can't. you can true so i think the key has always been uh, where uh, you know you know your people around you care for you right and you also equally care um and if you're very vocal about things that are going around in your life people understand uh, i think that uh, there may be short term uh, you know issues that you have to deal with but in the long run i i've seen that it's always worked if you're very vocal about what you're doing what your passions are which is back again to the expectations and then one focus one dream that you want to follow so luckily like a very supportive husband uh, i mean we've been uh, married since 7 years and we were dating before that 7 years so it's it's just uh, touch wood but uh, great sense of support that i have so in a way he, he knew exactly what he, what he was getting into so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> how about you prema So I would say that life hasn't been that hunky dory. Because uh, adults are still fine. You can tell them that okay, don't expect this. But what about daughter when she's 
throwing tantrums that why you didn't attend my so and so event. It happens, right? It happens. Like you can't meet everybody's expectations. Let's just live with it, right? You have to sometimes leave away with that guilt. Okay, I couldn't attend your function. I couldn't attend your so and so event, whatever, right? But uh, and that I think talking within within the family and including to my daughter, like talking too much about my work, about what I am doing, why I am doing, why I am so passionate about it. What is what is the change that we are bringing to other people's life, right? So that I think she's still six years old, but now she understands. Okay, that there is something that my mama is doing which helps so many people in some way, right? So that is why she sometimes misses some of my things, right? So, uh, but also I think that also brought in another aspect to my way of working, which is like organizing more, right? Now I organize. Okay, I have to give this half an hour to her. Or I have to organize some event for her friends over the weekend, at least like every fortnight, so that she understands. Okay, my mother gives me time. So I think it's about like how you set the expectation, how you talk more, how you share more, right? That okay, this is the problem. Now tell me what is the solution, right? So sometimes I do like that with my daughter. That okay, now you tell me that I have to attend this, and uh, it's your function also. Now you tell me what should I do. So then, okay, mama, you can go. <laughs> I will go. I will go with Adu. No, I, I mean, I, I think definitely uh, one one thing I take away from all your answers is that you're talking more about your own challenges, right? I think definitely involves the other person in your in your in your in your story, and I, and I think most founders feel like we're we're alone out there, right? We try to keep our problems to ourselves because nobody else will understand, and I think. It, it, we all face those issues, and that's a it's a great piece of advice. Just talk about it, right? It's it's not. It's not the end of the world, right? And maybe the other person may not have a perspective; they may completely not understand. But at least they'll feel like they're involved, they're included uh, in 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 your story. Because uh, you know, as a founder, you learn every single day. It just seems sometimes you know, like if I don't talk to some of you guys for a month or two, when you when you guys you know when I'm having the next conversation, it seems like so, so much has happened, so much has grown, and you didn't even realize what happened, right? Because sometimes a week feels like a year, and a month feels like a decade when it comes to running a startup, and there's so much that stuff that happens. So yeah, it's, it's probably a good advice for any founder out there to at least involve their closest ones, their ecosystem, their their best friends or their their partners in the in the journey, so that at least they understand. So I think that's a great great takeaway. And before, I mean, we've got we had so much more to talk about, but we're running out of time. So I'm gonna ask just one question uh, before we get into this uh, the never have I ever uh, uh, thingy. So um, you know. Or rather, maybe 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 two things, right? Uh, looking back, and that and if you could do it all over again, right? What's one thing you wish you had understood about being a founder before you got started? I I I I'll I'll take anyone who starts. I think I would have started a uh, few years earlier okay, than what better? I started at. Oh, so yeah, the earlier. What was the trigger? So you didn't get started. Like what was it? What was that? What was that trigger that brought you to go get going? So uh, I have tried few things earlier also, but this whole uh, getting founders, working on an idea, working more constructively. So I was a single uh, person running a HR consulting business earlier, and from there to OYO to uh, Vista. So I I felt that uh, I should have thought about this probably five years earlier as well. Uh, I didn't have that maturity then, uh, but I think uh, that's what I always feel that maybe time was one thing that if I had to change would have been that. I actually have the complete opposite. I'd be like I should have started a few years later, like taken more <laughs> of my industry or startup experience because I think I started a bit too early, and yeah, so I think that yeah that that be. Maybe spending some some more time in some more time in the industry before like yeah like what's what's the um, one one skill you would have liked to pick up before you got started like something you got to learn on the job too. Um, I think uh, well, I worked in an MNC right, so that was completely different from working in a startup. I think I would have liked to work in a startup before actually joining a startup because when you uh, when you're starting to build a start uh, a startup, you want everything to be perfect. So you're trying to build those rules that you've learned at an MNC, and that's not going to work here. um i mean it's to absolutely not going to but how do you deal with situations like that because honestly i am a self taught entrepreneur pretty much everybody is but i think um maybe if i had had more um 
experience it would have been an easier journey and maybe a faster journey because uh, it took me time to you know get my groove on so yeah no fair and and two very interesting and opposite perspectives on the same <laughs> on the same topic <laughs> uh priya what was one thing that yeah. you would have loved to uh, have known before you got started so uh, again uh, uh, just like ankita i think i would have loved to start with the first day started out so it came we pivoted our business model so all this working very well but i would have loved to have that experience of building offline centers know what goes into running that sort of an ops and tech business and then you know probably be able to um, uh, compare both of them much better prena are you going to take the opposite one like mahima or what's what's, what's mm-hmm. one thing that i have i have in my like all like uh, all my 12 years of experience have been in startups right never actually worked in an mnc kind of a culture so maybe taking one or two years of that kind of an experience like my must said right probably would have given me another perspective of like building a large or setting roots right so that's the reason that when uh, when i started us we need right for first six months i was looking for specifically this skill set in the other co which actually with your project yeah, the grass but, is always but, greener on the other side right <laughs> 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 So <laughs> good. We, we, this was this was the right polarizing question. Like, what what's one thing you should have done? You know, you would have wished to you have understood. But again, coming from four very different co-founders uh, from very four different very very different companies actually all together, it's been a great show. I think uh, I've obviously had to cut a lot of the content that I had because I think we got into some very interesting and maybe a little bit tangential conversations. But the last thing before I you know. Uh, before we end for the night and i think considering it it is it is a women's day and and, and interest a very interest important topic to talk about what would be your advice right to to and again coming from very different perspectives very different industries here your advice to aspiring female founders today right what's your advice that you would tell them uh, especially like indian female uh, aspiring founders i would say that in india we have taken years to have that kind of a Uh, I would st- still not say the like equal literacy rate, but still comparable literacy rate. But now that we are here, let us not take those many number of years to have a uh, equal or at least a comparable share the number of enterprises to start up. This is the time, right? Because it's never gonna be early or late, right? Just start up. Just get going. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a very good advice. Like 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 Ankita was saying earlier as well. Right? Like sometimes just in the in the wait to get started, it gets too late, right? And then you know you you regret the fact that I wasn't I start earlier. Uh, great, Mahima. What what's one piece of advice you would give to uh, an aspiring female founder out there? I think like any founder, irrespective of gender, I'd say like you know build your knowledge base, and I think you know really invest in yourself because and make. like take the time to learn through every interaction or experience that you have apart from the specific role that you're doing at your startup and definitely be reflective take constructive feedbacks because you kind of your own boss right uh, but it's very important that you listen to other people and learn from what they what they're saying because uh, you end up going into your own head while working uh, day in day out at the startup so it's very important to take like a third point of view so yeah that's pretty much it. thank you ma'am great great piece of advice once again uh priya you want to go next and ankita then you can round us off so uh yeah like prena was saying you know there's never been a better time for female entrepreneurs to get into the system so um i would say uh should get into it now uh definitely find a mentor or a support group where you can have uh multiple learning maximize your learning and you know uh, i think every time it 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 might so happen with somebody who's starting up you know a uh, I want to do everything on my own, but hey, you you're just one single person, and it's not possible for you to know everything end to end. So seek out for support, ask for more. You know, maybe you'll get only ten percent of what you ask for, but ask for it. I think that's very important for anybody who's starting out. And uh, again, like Mahima said, take feedback constructively. It it might happen that you know your opinions get clouded over time because you've been thinking on the same thing. 
to take other people's opinions uh, again speak out a lot and you know just be out there in terms of what you want and only then you'll get it piece of advice once again uh, i think each one of you guys is giving advice not just for female founders but i think founders in general if you could just even remove, remove the female word i think this this advice is uh, is really is asexual in that sense ankita how about you i think you've been the found, you've been the longest founder amongst all of us uh, uh yeah today so what what's your piece of advice to somebody getting started yeah so something that i've always believed in and uh, i think that's what i would tell everyone that let nothing stop you i think uh, if that's the motto in life there's anything and everything one can do uh, creation passion determination power these are things that should you should always constantly think about so uh, i mean in a in a one line it's like let nothing stop you i would say that let nothing stop you at all and i think that's the best way to end today's show thank you so much everyone yeah, every one of you awesome founders i think uh, each one of you has a story that would that you know cup one of them has already been showcased on the my talks would love to showcase the other ones uh, as we come along but uh, you know i i think if if the one takeaway that i take away from today's conversation is that you know it doesn't matter whether you're a male or a female uh, what really matters is that you get that you get going never take you know don't don't take no for an answer just get started and it really depends on the strength of your communication whether you get the support not just from uh, not just from your investors but even from your own ecosystem whether it is a partner or a family is the strength of the strength of your communication the fact that you've gone out and you know talked about your issues right sometimes as founders like i said we have this tendency to keep it to ourselves but if you if you go out and talk to your network if you go out and and, and really get them involved you really will find support in 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 the most uh, amazing of areas in places you never thought there would be support so thank you very much everyone thank you so much and i i'm i'm, I'm sure that the people listening in have um learned a lot uh from today's interaction thank you once again and happy women's day for to to all of you Thanks, Anurudh, for having Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Anurudh. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you nice interacting with all of you. Yeah. Good night. Happy Women's Day. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Happy Women's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.